Number seven, Frederick Cornwallis Canterbury also pointed out on pages 282 and 283 that Justin Martyr, as well as Pastor Hermes, did not quote the longer but only the shorter form. And I am glad to see some content going around about Justin Martyr because he's honestly a very important figure in history who actually did not believe in the Trinity. I will attempt to get to his works in the future um, at some time. So, two writers earlier than Eusebius show in knowledge of, his, of this shorter form of the text and neither of them formally cite the passage, but rather echo it. The first is Justinus Martyr in the Dialogue with Tryphon, 39, page 258. The second passage is in the Pastor Himraeus and is a less certain reference. The earliest writer who cites Matthew 28, verse 19 in a form approximating to the text established in the manuscripts of the Gospels is the Gnostic Theodotus, the theologian of Byzantine. On page 286, Canterbury explains that the Catholic Church strongly teaching the Trinity as one of their most fundamental doctrines, adopted the position that baptism in the name of Jesus Christ alone is quite valid. As the canon of the Synod of Nemours, 1284, expressed it, Baptisiti in nomini Christ, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. In some measure, it explains the decision of the popes that the text of Matthew 28 verse 19 was not yet authoritatively fixed by the church and that the Catholic version of the 4th century retained the Eusebian reading prior to Nicaea. Canterbury also then asks the following questions on pages 287 and 288 without committing himself. He says, is the Eusebian and Justin's reading of Matthew 28, 19, which omits the words, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, original? If so, was not the text including those words created about 130 to 140? Was it not due to a reaction on the text of Matthew of liturgical and specifically of baptismal usage? Did it not arise like the text of the three witnesses, referring to the addition in 1 John 5 verse 7 and 8, in the African and Old Latin texts, first of all, thence creep into the Greek texts at Rome and finally establish itself in the East during the Nicene Epoch in time to figure in all surviving Greek codices. And just a hint, my next video, The Fabricated Trinity Verses, is going to be about 1 John 5 verse 7 and 8. <laughs>